Good, uh, good morning. On this blue sky, although we're in the shade, it's a lovely late September's day. Lovely, wonderful. So we just want to share some good news with you for a few minutes. That's all. We're only here uh, for a little while. Uh, with Hello, Joanne. She's here. She. I was thinking about you this morning. Um, we're from different churches. Uh, we're full of Christ. We're just sharing the good news. Um, you may have not heard it this way before, um, but. Um, we're going to share some things with you. On the table, there's some free books. And uh, you can have a look for yourself. Uh, if there's any questions that uh, you, you have, I still have many questions. Um, come up to us. We don't know everything, but we know enough. And we'll answer your questions if you need prayer for anything. No matter what it is, under the sun, we will pray for you. Um, there's nothing that God cannot do. Nothing. Look at this wonderful creation that he made. It's mind-boggling. And the further we get into space, the galaxy, the universe, the more we're going to see, it's just stunning how fine-tuned creation is. But look, I don't want to talk about that this morning. I just put up on here um, man and woman, man plus woman. Wow. That's what uh, Jesus did on the cross, the, the Creator. Uh, I don't know whether you know, but he, he made us. He made every one of us. There's nothing that was made that was not made by him. Everything. That's what it says. Everything. That's what it says. Nothing that was made that was not made by him. So I want to talk to you this morning about uh, names of Jesus, but the one that's quite prominent. And, and sometimes we don't think about that. And that is, Jesus is called the Son of Man. The Son of Man. I know we call him the Son of God, and sometimes when we get the understanding of this wrong. Hello. And I want to read to you, uh, one of the most important titles of Jesus is the Son of Man. I just want to share this with you as you go past. I know you have busy lives, you're probably just the same as me. And the Son of God, both refer to his deity and humanity, but they are opposite of what you think. Son of God, deity, yes it means, but being like a human and obedient to the Father. But here, here's what I want to talk about. The Son of Man is a heavenly person, as in Daniel's prophecy, vision, 500 years before Christ was born, went into the heavenly court of God where he saw, this is Daniel, and his prophetic vision, he saw the Ancient of Days. Now I love that title, Ancient of Days. You know that refers to God Almighty. The Ancient of Days comes one like unto the Son of Man who then is given authority to judge the world. That was Daniel. You can check it yourself in chapter 7. This is 500 years before Christ walked on this earth. So that in the first instance, the Son of Man is a heavenly person who descends into this world whose principal role in his visitation to this earth is that of the heavenly judge. And then he returns to the presence of God in his ascension, 
we were in, we were remember what Jesus said. Now, not only is he called the Son of Man, Jesus also spoke this. No one has ascended, Jesus said, no one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So listen to me. When he heals on the Sabbath and is rebuked by his enemies, he said, I did this that you may know that the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And when he forgives sins and creates an uproar from his contemporaries, saying only God has the authority to forgive sins, Jesus said, I did this so you might know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And again, and again, and again, you will begin to see that this type of Son of Man that Jesus uses for himself is a highly exalted title. Alexei. And in fact, it was a claim to divine authority. That's what Daniel was seeing in his prophetic vision 500 years before. This Christ sitting at the right hand of power as the Son of Man. In a way, we have earthly judges here in Northampton. If I do something wrong, I pull before the judge. He will judge me, give me justice. So this Son of Man is our eternal judge, but he is also our Savior. He's our judge, but he's also our Savior. And that comes back to what he did on the cross. Even though we were still doing things against him, he came and died for us. That's called love. You won't find greater love in this world than that. So I cover that. You've heard of the moral law. And I'll tell you this up front. I have not kept the moral law. I have made many mistakes. I've broken it. Scripture says if we break one of them, we break all of them. And I've broken them. And I came to a point that, you know, God, you're all right and I'm wrong. I'm going to put my trust and faith in you. That was the best thing I ever did. So let me ask you this. Are we perfect? I'm not perfect. I am certainly, I'm far from perfect. So ask yourself this. I'm not judging you. I'm not your judge. You work this out for yourself. Ask yourself, are you perfect? Do you think you're a good person? Let me cover a couple of the moral laws. How many lies have you told in your life? 10, 20, 10,000, 20, 000, too many you can't remember? What do you call someone who tells lies? We call them a liar. Have you ever taken anything that did not belong to you? I mean, when I was a schoolboy, I used to go into the local sweet shop, fill up the pockets of sweets and show them out the school. I was leaving until I got caught with the shop owner. So have you ever taken anything that did not belong to you? What do you call someone who takes things that does not belong to them? We call them the thief. Let me ask one more. I'll just ask the man. Have you ever lusted after a woman? I'll just ask the man. Jesus said if you lust after another, you have committed adultery there and in your heart. There's another moral law. I'm not covering ten. I'm just covering three or four. So what do you call someone who does that? They call an adulterer. Let me ask you another. You're doing some work at home and some repairs. You've got a hammer and nail. You miss the nail and you hit the thumb. Out comes that curse word. Did you ever ask yourself why we curse Jesus Christ, the most perfect man that's ever walked this earth? Why do we curse him, the one who made us? The one who gave us life? The one who gave us every breath we take, every thought, the enjoyment of families, the enjoyment of love, 
the enjoyment of living on this earth with all its problems, and yet we curse him. Why don't we curse someone from the past? Like Putin or Zain Penn, who's killed millions of his own people under the wonderful term communism. Why don't we curse them? Why don't we curse Jesus Christ, the most perfect man? Scripture says there was never corrupt, no corrupt word ever left his mouth. And he came and died for us because he is the creator. He made this picture. He made me. He made you. He made that tree. He didn't just pop out the ground one summer. So I just share that with you. And if there is life after death in your mind, and you stand before the Creator, and we've broken His moral laws since Adam, Adam started, kicked it off, and we all do it. Will you be innocent or guilty? Ask yourself these things. These are the questions of life. Will you be guilty or innocent? Will it be eternal life or with God, in His provision, in His love, in His um, peace, in His perfection, or will it be absent from Him in eternal darkness? That's what Jesus talks about. You know, we can call it hell. You can put any name, uh, 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 Gomorrah, you can put any name you like to it, but the fact is it's a separation from the Creator, from God, for eternity. That's why there's anguish. That's why it says there's, there's a grinding of teeth and a regret for those who enter that eternal darkness. So that's the offer. Jesus came, came and shed his blood on the cross for us as a gift to us if we would just turn, repent, that save your soul, and put your trust and faith in him. God bless you too, brother. It is a gift of love. You know, maybe I'm standing outside Tesco's, maybe like Tesco's, you know, uh, they say, when it's gone, it's gone. <laughs> Isn't that the term that retail shops use? When it's gone, it's gone. Well, let me say to you, when your time is up, it is too late then. It will be too late for you then. And I realized that, and then one day in the past, I put my trust in him. I put my trust in him. He forgave me of all the things I've broken and done wrong. Gave me peace. Gave me peace. I'm telling you, that even if you're Elon Musk, you could not buy the peace that I have in my life. You couldn't buy it from me. Now, there's a beautiful word in the Bible. It's whosoever, and it goes like that. This, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter what color skin you are. It doesn't matter what culture you come from. It doesn't matter what you were taught when you were growing up. It doesn't matter what family you belong to. Even King Charles III, like his mother, wonderful queen, if Charles would bow that knee to the King of Kings, he would be saved. It applies to him just as it does to you and me. Thanks, Northampton, for listening. That's right, yeah. <laughs>